so we are just going to talk about the cardiovascular medication and here the monitor we can see the cholesterol lowering agent it means the medication what we use to reduce the cholesterol in the body cholesterol actually the uh, bad fatty tissue right and cholesterol deposit in the body and causes the atherosclerosis so before to and uh, discuss this cholesterol lowering agent or lipid lowering agent or anti lipidemic agent we have to know two points one is the atherosclerosis first so atherosclerosis you can see the picture number 1 this is the normal blood vessel normal blood vessel i said instead of the blood vessel it is caliber or more room inside but in the second picture the blood vessel is partly occluded or blocked because of cholesterol deposit in the wall of the artery or blood blood vessel so when the cholesterol deposit inside the artery they reduce the room or caliber of the lumen and blood does not passing and tissue do not get enough oxygen and they causes so many complication so lipid lowering agent or anti lipidemic agent or cholesterol lowering agent basically reduce the cholesterol from the blood vessel and facilitate the blood supply to the tissue now question come if anybody anybody is develop the cholesterol what happen so you can see the first picture this is the normal healthy blood vessel and here showing two different views and in the second picture the cholesterol start to deposit cholesterol it is fatty tissue especially the bad cholesterol deposit right so fatty tissue start to deposit and by time if you do not change your lifestyle sedentary lifestyle your food habit or if you do not take lipid lowering agent or cholesterol lowering agent the problem increase and lead to the occlusion or blockage like the picture number 3 increasing the deposition and finally block the pathway when the artery or blood vessel is blockage so many complication start especially in microcirculation like heart brain or peripheral arteries so in case of the heart when atherosclerotic change occur blood supply suddenly stopped and developed the myocardial infarction myocardial infarction right so local tissue is go and damaged when local tissue go and damaged right and they do not regenerate if not treated lead to the heart failure also 
this type atherosclerotic or bad cholesterol when deposit in the micro circulation in the brain and they causes the cerebral infarction or they can cause in the micro circulation in the peripheries and cause the gangrene or peripheral vascular disease and also can cause abdominal aortic aneurysm so there are so many complications if we do not treat we if we do not change the lifestyle right so what are the other complication complication are thrombosis formation blood clot blood clot and blockening when go in the microcirculation, they fall in stuck and blood clot formation, thrombosis formation, like here, like here. And sometimes when it is very small, sometimes the plug, so the cholesterol deposit in the picture number two and deposit is increased. And sometimes the little particles is break down and they traveling in the body and falling stuck in microcirculation like lungs causes pulmonary embolism. Falling stuck in the brain causes cerebral infarction, causes blockage in circulation in the heart and causes myocardial infarction, right? Hemorrhage means bleeding or wall weakening like aneurysm. And also the causes complication, uh, calcification. In this picture showing in where the first picture started deposit more and narrow. And also in the heart tissue showing this and gangrene formation is here. And this is the artery where atheroma formation because of atherosclerosis, right? So as I told you, the lipid lowering agent or anti-lipidemic agent like statin, simvastatin, niacin can reduce the deposition of cholesterol. Before to go, real portion pharmacology, I want to tell you, there are several type of cholesterol, but some cholesterol are good, some are bad, right? So there are two example here, we're showing the cholesterol, one is called bad cholesterol, other is called good cholesterol. We are just going to easy way to explain why they are good and why they are bad. So the good cholesterol is called HDL. HDL stands for high density lipoprotein. They are good because they remove the bad cholesterol from heart to the periphery of the body. So your heart is safe. So they are good. They act as a scavenger. Scavenger means who clean the road. You put so many, um, I mean, dust or so many materials, waste product, and that some people clean the road, act as a scavenger. So HDL remove the bad cholesterol from heart to the periphery for metabolism like liver. So they are friend. But LDL, which is called low density lipoprotein, they are bad because they carry the bad cholesterol from the periphery to the heart and causes atherosclerosis. So I want to recap it. LDL is a bad cholesterol because they carry the bad cholesterol from periphery like liver or other organ to the heart and causes atherosclerotic plug formation. LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. 
they are bad cholesterol. So uh, when anybody have a high LDL level or low HDL level, or when you see the occlusion in the artery by angiography, that times doctor prescribed the lipid lowering agents for the treatment of atherosclerosis. So the lipid lowering agents, basically the which is the frequently used, that one is statin HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. This medication work on the HMG-CoA reductase and they inhibit this enzyme and the cholesterol does not deposit in the body. They does not deposit in the body, I said. So the HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor, the group name, what are the other member in this group or other statin? First of all, simvastatin, I mean, atovastatin, pavastatin, lovastatin, rosovastatin, right? And also, ovastatin. So, easy way to remember, most of them end in statin, simvastatin, atovastatin, Pavastatin, lobo, lobastatin, and rosobastatin, right? And by statin. So this group of medication we basically use for hypercholesterolemia or use for treatment of cholesterol or treatment of atherosclerosis right and prevent myocardial infection prevent uh, cerebral infection prevent peripheral vascular disease and also prevent abdominal aortic aneurysm type problem so the mode of action how they work if you go the name asymmetric reductase means they decrease the production of this group of medication. They reduce, decrease the production of LDL, low density lipoprotein. As I told you, the uh, LDL is a bad cholesterol. HDL is a good cholesterol. So the statin decrease the production of LDL and increase the production of HDL because HDL is good. So is the way I want to explain again, the statin, atovastatin or Lipitor, Lipitor, we, they reduce the bad cholesterol and they increase the production of good cholesterol or they reduce the production of LDL or they increase the production of HDL. LDL stands for low density lipoprotein and HDL stands for high density lipoprotein. So if you give the atovastatin to your patient, you must know what are the side effects of this group of medication. The side effect of this group of medication are they cause hepatotoxicity. Hepatotoxicity means liver damage. They cause the liver damage. But how you understand this medication causes hypertoxicity. If we see the jaundice, jaundice means increase the bilirubin level in the blood and patient yellowish in the body, skin, sclera, urine. 
and also patient has a right upper quadrant pain because right side is a liver right dark urine elevate the liver function test and also patient usually complain of muscle pain muscle pain is a complication of statin or atovastatin. And other most frequently asking question by NPLEX board, the side effect of this group of medication they cause, rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis means when muscle is break down, when muscle tissue is break down, they causes the deposition in the kidney and kidney shut down. This is called rhabdomyolysis. So atobastatin or simbastatin, as I told you, the side effect are, they are bad for liver, hepatotoxicity, they cause liver damage, or GI upset, means nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And they also cause muscle pain and rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis means muscle breakdown and muscle is deposited in the kidney and kidney shut down. So as a RN or LPN, what is your intervention? It is very important. So if your patient has to take the atovastatin or simbastatin, tell your patient or give this medication, administer at this medication at the evening time, evening food, because cholesterol synthesized in the body at the night time. And this group of medication is bad for the liver, so we have to do the liver function test. And also it has to check the CK level, creatinine kinase level. Keep it mind, keep it mind, this medication are contraindicated with pregnancy. And also tell your patient to avoid alcohol, to avoid alcohol or no grapefruit juice. So when we study the calcium channel blocker, right? We do not give the uh, patient with a grapefruit with statin, calcium channel blocker, or carbamazepine. Never give with grapefruit juice. So what? Next, next group of medication we have to know that one is, is uh, bile acid sequestrum. Bile acid sequestrum, sequestrin or sequestrum. So basically, uh, we use the cholesteramine in this group. Medication are cholesteramine or is it map or game free Brazil, game free Brazil, right? All of these are biases sequent from also niacin or vitamin B3. Vitamin B3 actually vitamin, other name are called niacin. So in this, is bile acid sequestrin. We are going to talk about the niacin. We are going to talk gamfibrosil. We are going to talk about the colisebhenam, colisebhenam, and cholestyramine, and also the cholestyramine. So and here, another medication is called ezetimab. The ezetimab, basically, cholesterol absorption inhibitor. Other name is called 
cholesterol absorption inhibitor so the most common one first is called the niacin and it is most common and it is most easy as well so niacin is a lipid lowering agent or anti lipidemic agent niacin is a vitamin we can get from onion onion right so niacin another name is called nicotinic acid other name is called nicotinic acid niacin work or mode of action niacin it is from here the niacin mode of action i said niacin other name is nicotinic acid it is vitamin b3 the mode of action they decrease the lipoprotein and triglyceride they decrease the lipoprotein and triglyceride synthesis and also lower the low density lipoprotein or triglyceride so they decrease the lipoprotein and triglyceride especially in the last dose and also lower the ldl cholesterol and triglyceride the side effect of this medication vitamin b3 or niacin the side effect the flushing of fats flushing of fats means the blood supply in the facial skin or cute cuticle of the face or blood supply is increase right is called the flushing of the face so flushing of face they cause git upset as like as simvastatin or atovastatin they are also hepatotoxic they are also hepatotoxic right and niacin can cause hyperglycemia like steroid cause hyperglycemia loop diuretics can cause hyperglycemia as a lpn or as a rn what you has to know you should know if your patient should take the niacin or or vitamin b3 you has to educate your patient if they take the anti hypertensive medication because of diabetic they has to adjust the dose of insulin or metformin because they causes the hyperglycemia what the key point key point are the key point are this medication is hepatotoxic means they causes the liver damage so we has to monitor the liver function test this medication cause hyperglycemia so we has to monitor the blood sugar level if your patient is high diabetic they you has to tell them to monitor adjust the blood uh, in blood adjust the insulin or metformin right but the most important is what i like uh, when i prepare my exam i wrote everything niacin or nicotinic acid cause hyperglycemia what are the other drugs cause hyperglycemia steroid glucocorticoid mineralocorticoid loop diuretics thiazide diuretics they cause or pusamide they causes the hyperglycemia so what next this is the niacin we have done now we are going to talk about the cholesterol absorption inhibitor this is called is tmib 
their cholesterol absorption inhibitor. They prevent cholesterol absorption in the body, right? And also the indication of this medication is the TMA, hypercholesterolemia. When the too much cholesterol in the blood, it's called hypercholesterolemia. The mode of action of this medication, they inhibit the absorption of cholesterol in a small intestine. In a small intestine, I said, we are, we are talking about right now in this level here, is the TMIP. So is it TMIP, they inhibit the absorption of cholesterol in a small intestine. The side effect, very easy, is like a atovastatin or simvastatin, like niacin. They are also hepatotoxic, toxic. they cause liver damage. So in three medication, what we have to tell to the patient? We tell if they are urine color is yellow, skin is yellow, sclera is yellow, they have to inform to you and you have to inform to the healthcare provider. So you have to know what are the signs, symptoms of the liver damage or hepatotoxicity, patient present with the jaundice, right upper quadrant pain, dark urine, and elevate the liver enzyme, right? So key points for NCLEX board, as you know, the hepatotoxic, so monitoring the liver function test and also monitor the CK level, creatinine kinase level. That's it. What next here? The next group of medication we has to uh, we are going to discuss it is from here. Colisebelum, right? This they decrease the LDL or hemoglobin A1C. So Colisa Belan indication are hypercholesterolemia, hypercholesterolemia, this one, and they uh, here, other name is called cholestyramine, cholestyramine. They bind the bile acid in intestine and causing the increase excretion of cholesterol and lower the LDL, LDL cholesterol, they lower. The only one side effect, they causes constipation. So atobastatin or simbastatin, ezetimab or niacin, or here, gemfribrozil, everyone can cause hepatotoxicity except cholestyramine. So if your patient has a problem in the liver, there's the only one medication we has to give them. It's called cholestyramine, but they cause the constipation, right? If your patient take this, what you have to educate your patient to take increase the dietary fiber and fluids and tell them take with food and with a full glass of water, right? So what are the note we have to know from cholesteramine? So increase the dietary fiber and fluid. You should tell your patient to prevent constipation. And also this medication, is better to take with food or with a full glass of water. They interfere with the absorption of fat soluble vitamin. What they are? Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K add act. It's their fat soluble vitamin. 
but B complex and vitamin C are water soluble, right? So ADEK absorption impaired because of this medication. Hmm? Also, uh, they interfere with the absorption of oral contraceptive. So if any reproductive age group, any couple is trying to uh, prevent the pregnancy and take oral contraception, septic, tell them they interfere. So it is better to use the different barrier method or any other method rather than this. And also another medication sometimes we use, uh, that one is here to call Game Free Brazil. Game Free Brazil. Okay. So Game Free Brazil basically uh, increase the HDL. Increase the HDL, right? And HDL is a good cholesterol. Okay. Another name is called Fibrate. This medication is called Fibrate. So indication of this are hypercholesterolemia, right? And mode of action, they decrease the triglyceride production and they decrease the triglyceride transportation or transport, also increase the HDL. Totally different than the other uh, anti, uh, I mean, anti-lipidemic agents. The only side effect, they cause the gallstone. They cause the stone formation in the gallbladder. As like as the atrovastatin or azetimib, they also cause muscle pain, right? As like as other like atrovastatin and niacin, they cause GIT upset. Which medication, which Lipid, uh, lipid loading agents do not apotoxic cholesteramine, right? And rest of them are hepatotoxicity and causes the muscle pain. Which uh, lipid lowering agent causes the hyperglycemia, niacin? What are the other medications causes hyperglycemia? Steroid and low diuretics, right? So when you give your patient the game free Brazil, the key point you have to know, give 30 minutes before breakfast and or before 30 minutes dinner. And always you have to monitor the liver function because they are hepatotoxic and also monitor the CK level. C means C creatinine level, reactive creatinine level. So overview a little bit, uh, also the nursing intervention for all. So statin, statin contraindicated in pregnancy, right? And also it is good if we give at the night time. And also, we have to avoid the grabs for jorts. If your patient has to take the statin, we have to monitor the liver function test. But if your patient has to take uh, game free Brazil, give your patient to take this medication 30 minutes before the food. 30 minutes before the meal or dinner. This is very basic information you have to know for lipid lowering agents.